Swedish death cleaning. This week we incorporated three awesome principles from this method and we're not looking back. Not disorganized, I would say. Maybe I'm just not as intentional about it. That was so diplomatic. <laughs> When it comes to my husband Charlie and I, opposites definitely attract because he doesn't share my same love of cleaning and organizing. <laughs> Charlie! <laughs> what I like about this is the best t-shirts rise to the top, you know? And it's crazy how I can organize so many other people's homes, but spots in my own house go neglected. So I once and for all wanted to give him a closet he could love. And in the process of clearing everything out, I realized there was a ton of my stuff in there too. This is Charlie's declutter pile. Turned out awesome, so he's gonna have more space in the closet. And it turns out I have stored a lot of stuff in this closet that I had forgotten about and I need to go through. Marie Kondo and Sparking Joy is great, but a lot of this stuff felt so much bigger. These were things that I didn't know what to do with for years. And because that space was already messy, I just shoved it in there and closed the door. Yes, even people who organize professionally have to deal with their own clutter. It's normal, I promise. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Love you. Sparks Joy. Sparks necessity. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Enter Swedish death cleaning, which sounds totally horrible, but really it's just a way to celebrate and reflect. You go through and declutter items that you don't want to continue the clutter cycle with by passing on to future generations. You celebrate times past, you let go of things, so you just keep the things that really matter. There's no need to burden others with your stuff. Margareta Magnussen wrote a great book on this topic and she believes we hold on to things for three basic reasons. Our hoarding instinct, our clutter instinct, and our fear of death. We are born hunter-gatherers. We want to hold on to things in case of emergency. And we're really afraid that people that we love are going to want all of those things. And the reality is, almost none of that is true. In fact, almost all of the clutter and things that we hold on to are actually causing us mental health problems way more than they are helping us. And sometimes when you sit down to deal with it, you have to like confront all of the emotion that goes along with it. and it's really taxing. Like I, I feel like we do hold on to a lot of things because we feel anxious about something. This is a painting of the lake house that I grew up on as a kid. I dislike the frame, but like, I don't want this. I'm never gonna put this anywhere. And unless you've achieved some sort of perfect harmony with no real life going on, then your house may be already perfect. Ours is definitely not. I think Owen's been through this stuff one too many times. <laughs> And what I love is the main question to ask yourself in this process is will anyone be happier if I save this? That doesn't make me happier and my mom gave it to me because it didn't make her happy. So we don't need to keep things that don't make anybody happy. I think for me what made this process different is I was really intentional with some of the things that felt super special to me but I had no use for in my life. Even as simple as making a phone call can make so much relief and just ease as you declutter. Hey dad. Hi Catherine. I was just calling because I found a box of all my cats meow village. I mean do you want it to be able to display because a lot of this stuff is stuff that you got for me. Yeah, no, that's sure it's possible, but I don't think so. Thanks for thinking of me. Okay. okay. Love okay. you. Bye-bye. Uh, woo! <laughs> I think you forget that stuff can be really emotional. It's emotional for me. And I think, like, after my brother died, I just, like, shoved it all down, and I would just, like, stick certain things in a closet that I wasn't ready to deal with because these things have their own timeline, right? Like sometimes it takes time and I feel like now I'm finally ready to part with some of those things and let go to have more freedom in that space and more freedom in Charlie's space. And I think at the end of the day, that's a good thing. Letting it go, we're all happier without it. What really stood out to me is to commit to what brings you benefits incalculable. That awesome joy of having a space that is freshly organized.
a great joy. If this video inspired you, definitely leave a comment down below and leave it a big thumbs up. You can get organized on a budget and reclaim a space to make it one that you love. I am so grateful for you in this community. Be sure to subscribe so I can see you guys in the next video and I'll catch you there. Bye. I love you, babe. I love you too. <laughs> You're fixing your beard. I wore it for my um, beach zombie outfit. <laughs> like how many more times are you gonna four be? Four years ago. How many more times are you gonna be a beach zombie, Charlie? I don't know. If I get rid of this shirt, probably never. You have our peel back to dress on there, right? Yeah. Send me a new pair of shirts. No, please don't.